Hello teachers, if you want to use the excellent resources in Concord Consortium, uh, I would suggest making a teacher account. You can preview the activities and search activities for your class right here and pre pre preview them without having an account. Some of the activities are simple interactives, much like FET, and others are five weeks of curriculum. So. Um, it makes sense to have an account if you're going to commit to the five weeks of curriculum so you can store your students' responses and have an assessment opportunity. So let's get started and hit register. Then obviously you pick I am a teacher. This page is pretty self-explanatory. You can sign up with Google. I have my students do that. They have to be logged into their student Google account. And then you hit next here. The next step is to make a username. Put in an email. It needs to be your teacher email so they know you're a teacher. You can check this box or not. They do have a lot of updates and when they do publish something new, they'll send you an email. And the country is pretty obvious. Then hit register and we'll go on. Once you put in your country, and your postal code <clears throat> it'll come up with a list of schools and you can choose yours if you don't see it you can add it once you've got your school in there you can just click register they're going to send you an email with an activation code to your teacher email this is how they find out that you're actually a teacher and don't give away teacher resources to students once you get your email verified and they find out that yes, you are indeed a teacher, you can go in and set up your classes. So here are my classes, but if I want to add a class, which will what you'll want to do is put in the class name. So you could say our science or biology and your name. So your students know it's uh, indeed their class. Put a description of the class. This is very important. Um, you need to have a class word. So something like maybe your school name or your name and the name of your class. Something pretty simple because students will need to know this to find your class once they try to register in Concord. And it's pretty simple. They can totally do it. It's not that hard. It's worth doing. Um, once they're registered, they're registered for the whole year. Um, it tracks their progress in your class and um, it'll also save their work. So eventually they, they can print it out and hand it in. Um, they can also print it out as a PDF and hand it into your LMS. That Once you have a class set up, you can go in and add activities or assignments. Um, once your students register for your class, you can look at your student roster. Um, I've already set up my class. Uh, if you want to add an assignment, you can go here. I could add, I could go to the Earth Science Resource Collection here, or I could type that in as a search. And I could add can we feed a growing population? And I could assign the pretest and post test if you're interested in doing that. Um, I could just assign this model that's part of the, uh, the whole curriculum. So students could just work with a piece of it or you can assign the whole thing. Sometimes I don't use every activity inside the curriculum um, just for time. You can hit preview and then you can look at what's in the actual curriculum here. You can also uh, do this outside your teacher account um, if you want to do that. Uh, I often do that outside my teacher account and then I'll decide whether I want to assign it or not. Once you've decided, yep, I do want to use this curriculum, you hit assign or share. And then this is a shareable URL. If you just want to use it for a day and you don't want your students' answers saved, it's just a short-term commitment, um, you can give them the shareable URL. If you want to assign it to your earth science class, you just check which class you want it to assign. 
and then you hit save and then it should show up underneath your class let's go look so we can see that this class has two assignments assessing seismic hazards risk with uh, code which is a block coding program which is great if you want to do earthquakes um, and can we feed the growing population? Once your students have finished something and you it's past the deadline for that work, you can lock it, but then you can still have their work and go back and look at some of their answers if you wanna evaluate student work. This class doesn't have any students in it, so I can easily click on my student roster here. Um, that's actually a pretend student. Um, so, there's no FERPA violation here. Um, this is where you can check who's actually signed up, who uh, logged in. And then um, beyond the student roster here, you can do class setup. Uh, I've already done that. Uh, and we can look at assignments. Once you've got some students in there and students doing work, you can see student work, and I'll show you that in a class that's already set up. Once you've had students register in your class, um, you can do show detail. That'll show all the students. Uh, you can, of course, preview the unit. And this is what I, how I run the unit when I'm working with students and demoing. You can run the teacher edition, which is very handy. It has all the answers. Um, it works just like a regular teacher edition where the teacher stuff is on top of uh, the other student materials. So you can look at theory and background. Um, they have all the answers or exemplars. Uh, it's quite handy, um, especially if it's new material for you and you're kind of learning before you have to teach it. I'm back here at the kind of the teacher dashboard and I'm going to click on the class class dashboard and I'll hide students names so you can see kind of what you can what your assessment uh, opportunities are here on the site. Students can also print out their work and hand it in. We use Notability and then Schoology. Um, there are a lot of options. You can students can print it as a document and they can print it as a PDF and hand it in electronically. So I'll click on class dashboard, hide my student names, and we'll look at what you can do. Here's a class dashboard from the uh, What is the Future of Earth's Climate? I'm on the second activity within the module. I can look at every, st their student names are over to the left here. You can't see them. Uh, the green checks and red X's, they're multiple choice questions and it's just did the student get it correct or did they get not did they not get it correct? If you click on a particular question, it'll pull up the student's name and their response. You can also click on see all responses. It'll show students' names and every response for that question, which is pretty handy. It's clunky to grade this way. But it's great if you just want to um, see a real time sampling of what students answers are and that gives you an opportunity to reteach uh, quickly and kind of catch something before uh, students move forward with a misunderstanding. Here's what a student will see if they log in. This student has this pretend student has been in my class for a very long time. So he's in a number of classes and uh, has a number of things to do here. Um, this is the current class I'm working on, and this is the current thing we're running. If a student wants to join a new class uh, for the next year, they just use the new class word that you've come up for the next year. Every time you make a new class, you need to have a new class word. It's not, uh, it's not too complicated. So that's an overview of using Concord. It's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. Um, there's a tiny bit of a learning curve, but it's really handy. There's lots of curriculum here and you've got, it's kind of plug and play once you're set up. So uh, you can ask questions in the comments and I will try to help. You can also go to help at concord.org and they're very responsive.
Thanks so much for watching. This is Dr. B signing off.